appears Morgan has viciously lashed out at Meghan Markle following her court victory earlier today, branding her a fork-tongued devious manipulative piece of work. The Duchess of Sussex won her bombshell legal battle with the publisher of the Mail on Sunday over a letter to her estranged father. She hailed it as a victory not just for me, but for anyone who has ever felt scared to stand up for what's right in a powerful statement afterwards. The Duchess had won her case earlier this year but the publisher brought an appeal arguing in a three-day hearing in November that the case should go to a full trial. Throughout the privacy case there had been a number of bombshell moments, from the news that Meghan drafted the letter to her dad knowing that it could be leaked to claims that she and Harry did help the authors of Finding Freedom. However, Piers has hit back at Meghan, mocking her for impersonating some kind of latter-day Winston Churchill rallying a nation in wartime rather than an unemployed actress fleecing her unelected marital royal status for gazillions from her California mansion. In his column, Piers refers to the claim that Meghan had called her father Thomas Markle daddy in the letter to pull on heartstrings if it were to be leaked. Jason Knauf, who was communications secretary to Meghan and Harry until March 2019, said the Duchess had indicated to him in August of the previous year that she recognized it was possible that her father would make the letter public. Mr. Knauf said in his written evidence, she also asked a specific question regarding addressing Mr. Markle as daddy in the letter, saying given I've only ever called him daddy it may make sense to open as such, despite him being less than paternal, and in the unfortunate event that it leaked it would pull at the heartstrings. Pierce says, I regret to say that when I read that ruthlessly cynical little gem, my heartstrings remained resolutely unmoved but a small piece of repulsed intestinal fluid spat out of my mouth. He goes on to refer to Knauf's witness testimony leading to an apology from Meghan to the court. Oh pure Elise, Piers seethes. This is right up there with Bill Clinton's I did not have sexual relations with that woman, Miss Lewinsky on the Richter scale of rhetorical bulls. The former GMB presenter adds, thanks to this court case, we've now seen what the real Meghan looks like, fork tongue and all. It's not a pretty sight. Yet one agreed, writing, the Queen should strip them of their titles. Also if she sent a letter to her father doesn't that become his property to do with what he wished or am I wrong? Another news, the cottage was converted into a family home for the Duke and Duchess of Sussex prior to their departure from the royal family as senior working royals. It is the current residence of Prince Harry's cousin, Princess Eugenie, and her husband, Jack Brooksbank. The first installment of the documentary aired on Monday November 22, and was met with fierce criticism. The second part, shown on the BBC on Monday November 29 has sparked similar backlash. Royal expert Richard Eden, in anticipation of the second episode, took to Twitter to say, let's see if hashtag the princess and press is any more balanced this week. After the documentary's second episode finished, the Daily Mail's diary editor told his over 16,000 followers of a huge flaw in the BBC's coverage, sadly, second part of hashtag the princess and press was no more balanced for example it discussed press criticism of harry and hashtag megan's costly renovation of frogmore cottage but with no mention at all of fact that the couple had rejected big home already prepared for the matt ken palace replying to mr eden's tweet fellow documentary viewer at jen carson taylor commented no it wasn't more balanced it did have a different tone i'm confused why the bbc commissioned this story is the bbc trying to shape public opinion if so why now? They asked Mr. Eden, you're in a better position to know, is there a demand for this type of mockumentary? A fan page for Prince William and Kate, Cambridge's Dearly, then replied, it was H&M's, Harry and Meghan's, jealousy of Prince William and Catherine that couldn't allow them to move next door to them and Kensington Palace because at KPW and CR No. 1 and set the rules there. However, other Twitter users criticized Mr. Eden's statements citing his own reports that Frogmore was still inhabited by the Duke of Gloucester and his wife Birgitta at conflicting points. The two-part documentary, The Princes and the Press, delves into Princes Harry and William's relationships with the media in the UK. Hosted by Amol Rajan, the BBC said the documentary was about how royal journalism is done and features a range of journalists from broadcast and the newspaper industry. The first part angered numerous royal households which, in a rare move, issued a joint statement last week collectively from Buckingham Palace, Clarence House, and Kensington Palace. It read, A free, responsible and open press is of vital importance to a healthy democracy. However, too often overblown and unfounded claims from unnamed sources are presented as facts and it is disappointing when anyone, including the BBC, gives them credibility. Defending the documentary after this statement, BBC Chair, Richard Sharp, said the BBC is a national institution and we approach our relationships with the other national institutions with great care and thought. The royal family is at the center of our identity, its underlying importance is unequivocal.
He added the BBC had tremendous respect for all aspects of the royal family.